Hey guys, Ideal Holsters again. Uh, this is Patrick. And uh, my last few projects I've done, which you've seen through my videos, have been uh, holsters. And on a website or Google site, I've mentioned that I do knife sheaths. So just to uh, prove that, I did one recently, I uh, just finished. And also with a modification to that knife. And I'm going to introduce it here in a second. And, um, but first, I'll show you my first attempt, which you've seen this one plenty of times on camera. Was the uh, Brian Breeden knife that was designed and uh, made by him? Actually, I designed it. And he just he made it and uh, made a kind of sheath for it. And a couple things I wasn't too proud about on this knife sheath was um, mostly because the uh, knife when I put it into the Kydex I didn't line it up correctly, and due to that everything else kind of didn't align <laughs> with the after that, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so once the knife was crooked, so were the rivets. Uh, they're not lined up correctly. But honestly, I didn't care because this knife and the sheath is going to be strapped to a, uh, to a backpack for uh, hiking. So I really don't care how it looked appearance-wise as long as it had some enough rivet holes for it to mount with a 550 cord to the pack somehow. And then I'm going to attach some belt loops to it later. It also gave me a chance to uh, try out some uh, rivets that I ordered. I don't know what that was. And um, I got the ones for uh, 0.8, so 800ths of an inch. I was just buying two of those together. And this is what it comes to um, they split very easily. <laughs> that was a very minimal amount of pressure on them. And I do use uh, the old style of the hammer and the tamp. Knock them down. I don't have a press or anything like that. And uh, the stress that just caused three of them to crack. Uh, not too... I don't know what that sound is. It's uh, <laughs> so not too impressed by that. And when I do my holsters for uh, guns and stuff, I use um, a little bit bigger rivet that accommodates for a thicker kydex and they tend to roll better um, using the same hammer and tamp deal so putting this knife over here to the side for you and actually let's get out the frame so I'll go ahead and introduce the knife and you can see the modification I did so uh, here it is go ahead and rejoice uh, cold steel roach belly lovers here it is, and I got this knife mod. I'm still working on the finishing of it. It's kind of a little rough and burry still. Uh, I found this mod on YouTube by a guy by uh, Hugo 2X, and he demonstrates, or doesn't demonstrate, shows his finished product and shows the tools he used. So you can find him on YouTube by just typing in Roach Belly. You'll see customized Roach Belly and my thoughts on Cold Steel. It's the title of it. Uh, great modification for you to have, excuse me, for those who have the roach belly, you understand why this is such a great modification because it's very slippery material and the slightest amount of moisture on your hand, it just slide all over the place on it. It's not secure in your fingers, although Cold Steel does give you some jimping. It's not the best, but some it helps. <clears throat> so, you know what that means. Sheath for it. So here's my sheath. Uh, this time I put the uh, their American Sportsman product on here. It's from uh, JantSupply.com. It was on my uh, Brian Breeden. I took it off because, once again, holes weren't aligned and I can only get two of them to mount. This sheath I uh, made specifically for this setup. And I wanted to see, once again, how I can mount this on a knife and how it can be used. If I decide to do more sheaths, this is what will come on them. And I actually do like it. Uh, Jantz puts a piece of Kydex on the back. And they mount this too. So you actually can heat it and form it right to the uh, sheath itself. As you see, I uh, heated it and then I would tighten the bolts in so it would pull nice and snug. Uh, it came out really well. And uh, there's the... 
sheath itself. It's uh, very simple. Nice little bit of definition. And um, I'll go ahead and say this also. A lot of the cold steel Kydex sheaths I have seen online, they are a um, one piece of Kydex with the knife and then they're folded over and then pressed. Um, to me, that works. But I don't like that because I kind of find it to be lazy. Um, might as well just do two pieces, fit two pieces, and fit it to one knife. It takes a little bit more work and effort, but and again, it comes out nice because you have a nice you know, seam all the way around. You know, there's no uh, where one side is folded over. It just, I don't know. This makes sense to me. Notice there's no drain hole. Um, reason being, this is makes a great camp knife, but it also makes a great secondary option on your carry and that's why I made this and that's why it will be carried on my person now and this uh, to show you the back side here it's very snug fit very snug fit so when this knife is inserted you'll notice the blade comes to a stop and um, I left it that way for a purpose because the knife has enough room up here that it can rock forward and then you pushed in. You pushed in. You see, get a gist. I can't do it. Look at the review finder. <laughs> and uh, there's not a lot of um, space with the uh, knife itself and the kydex. So all of it is used. And I left it the minimum of length. So it came out very well. I'm very impressed with it. And uh, notice this is upside down because I carry it inside my waist, uh, excuse me, inside my uh, belt against my pants and then I just close this over top of my belt and uh, I'll go ahead and uh, while it's there, I'll go ahead and explain some more things show you on the belt here, once again the bison uh, but yeah, I do like it and uh, these will be available for sale on my website if you're interested, it, these don't take very long to make and um, it does take a lot of time fitting and seeing how I want to roll them. Here's the uh, the belt that you will have seen so far and you will come to love. As many times you will see it on this channel. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's how she rides on the belt. Okay, if I was going to wear it upside down. There you go. If it was on the inside, same thing. Uh, now I'll slop. Good enough, and uh, it looks well. Looks very good on there, <clears throat> especially with that olive color. All right, well that's uh, the cold steel roach belly kind of sheath by Ideal Holsters, and uh, I hope you'll like it. And especially this modification. Um, if you're thinking, have been thinking of doing it, do it. I just will tell you, be prepared to get messy. Um, I'm finally still getting this stuff off of me, back from the shop up twice and still finding stuff everywhere. It's a messy job and trying, trying to figure out how to get the burrs off is another ordeal. Um, but yeah, I like the sheath. If, uh, that's pretty much all I have on that. And I thought, why I'm taking up your time with this video, i roll this uh, back over real quick. I thought I'd show you all the... Uh, just real quick, I'll show you the modifications to my shop along with my website in case y'all are having trouble finding it or maneuvering it. But, um, let's go here. Okay, yep, I got a computer down here now with internet and a nice sound system. Got two speakers and a subwoofer down on the floor. So I uh, can rock out and jam out while I'm in here doing some uh, holsters or sheaths. So here's the site. Uh, this is the home page. As you can see, uh, you know, carry your options. That's one of my slogans I'm using for the site because it's it means what it means. Carry your options. Uh, what I do is you tell me what you want, I build it. Um, not necessarily the dimensions of stuff, but you know we're coming down to uh, if you want a finger cut out, um, 
if you want the muzzle enclosed or unclosed, things like that, inside the waistband, outside the waistband, those kind of things. Uh, design kind of comes from my head to the product, so I can't really sit down and draw out a full different scale of um, holster, because I kind of have this series I got going, you've seen with the other ones, the cuts and stuff, I don't know, I think it looks, I think it looks really good, <clears throat> excuse me, really good. So anyway, this is the um, home page. Um, you can follow me direct right here from the link with um, Twitter. And down the bottom you'll see the recent announcements that I post. And it keeps it update. <clears throat> Excuse me, updated. That's, a, that's the beauty of Google Sites. And um, I'm just go ahead and pull up the Ruger LCP380 over here on the Stay Tuned. And uh, this comes up with the um, my little brief uh, introduction. And then followed by some pictures. And what do you see right here? Oh, ho. Yeah. I'm going to click on that one. Looks to me like cold steel roach belly before the modification. So, uh, just the site. It's pretty basic. Um, Google Sites, you know, we expect it's free. I'm glad they allow us to do things like that. And, um, and I'm running uh, Ubuntu on here. <laughs> it's 11.1, .1, so. I don't know if this computer can handle that. It's kind of an old one. But, uh, let's go back. But anyway, that's the, uh, that's the, um, sheath for the cold steel roach belly. And, um, pretty much all I can say. So, uh, once again, guys, if you like what you're seeing and you want to contact me, Go by my emails on my Google site, which is located on my channel page to the right, where it says holsters for sale. Click on it, go to contact me, and you'll find all the contact information. But if you don't want to do all that, it's uh, idealholsters at gmail.com. And just let me know, guys. I um, appreciate all y'all's support and the comments and stuff like that is what's keeping me motivated in doing this. So keep them coming, please, guys. So uh, I'll see y'all again, and uh, hopefully by this time I'll have a uh, uh, car PM9 holster right here. So, um, once again, thanks guys, and uh, subscribe if you like, and follow me on Twitter and all that fun stuff. Alright guys, I'm Patrick once again, and I'm out. See ya.